You know, when you look at the life of Solomon, you see that the father is introducing him to an offer financially. He's introducing him into the opportunity to become even richer than he already is simply because he's honoring God and he's addicted to honoring God. This is not something God has to force him to do. He's developing this muscle of honor and sowing and trust. And the Lord in response is telling him, I offer this to you. When you operate in offerings and you, you are a master of offerings, the master himself, God Almighty, offers things to you. The powerful thing about the offering anointing is when you offer up something unto God to sow into him, he offers things into you to sow into you. The harvest is God's sowing ministry. And so God offers everybody the opportunity to walk in sowing. He doesn't force you. But he himself has a sowing ministry that he will operate in if you choose yours. When Solomon was selecting that sowing anointing, you notice what God did? God offered him and told him, I'll give you riches. I'll give you wealth. This is God saying, I'm going to sow into you now. Because you decided to walk in sowing towards me, I'm going to walk in sowing towards you. Think about this. God is saying, I'm going to walk in sowing towards you. I'm going to honor you because you chose to live a life of honoring me. Now, saints, for you to be a sower, you got to be aggressive. Because you got to get seed. For you to be a seed receiver, you got to become unselfish. You got to work. You got to sacrifice your body. So for you to walk as a sower, it, it, it touches God because the Lord knows that Sowing money is not the only thing that you're sowing. You're sowing your time. You're sowing your body. You're sowing your efforts. You're getting money somehow. So God is not ignorant of that. He knows that somehow money is coming to you because you have chosen to sacrifice your physical body somehow. And when you offer the money that you produced out of that sacrifice... The father takes note of it. The word of God said, if you're faithful with a few things, he make you ruler over much things. You notice he's talking about things. So that means that the father investigates what you're doing with what you are working with currently. He investigates how you perceive him as your soul. He studies to see how much you invest in him. He studies to see not only if you're so, but how much you're so. There's levels of giving. There's a time when somebody starts off giving. There are certain financial amounts they hit. But when you go to the degree of sowing where you understand God's power, you can't help but give big money. Because now you are coming into a covenant agreement with the Father for a limited life. Once you recognize how big you was created to be used by God on earth, it's impossible for you not to chase the sowing anointing in a big fashion. The Bible says if you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. That means that big sowing causes big reaping. Just think about that. 
Sowing big means reaping big. Reaping means that this is what I'm going to collect. This is what I'm going to possess. And so saints, no hater determines how rich you are. No government determines how rich you are. No, no adversity determines how rich you are. Nothing is determining how rich you become in this life, how prosperous you become in this life, how provisionally sponsored you become in this life, but you. You are the one that's determining how big you live. And saints, I want you to see this. Isaac is the son of Abram, but he has to get in a famine to recognize how he's been missing the sowing anointing. See, life could happen to you and, and two things can even happen. Either you start sowing, you stop sowing into God's kingdom or you sow into the wrong person. You sow into the wrong ministry. That's another aspect. See, there are people that don't stop sowing, but they sow out of a spirit of antichrist. That means that the Holy Ghost it had not given them that soul to sow into. Those seeds don't bring you into progress because it's out of the will of God. The seeds that you sow, that God has not anointed you, assigned you to sow, do not yield the harvest of blessing. It doesn't. It doesn't. Because you're in disobedience. That's like God saying, you, you, you right here, the woman at Zarephath, and she says, I'm a sword into my son. You think that's going to give her the harvest? You think that's going to give her the hundredfold? No. Why? Because that's not her soul. She was already sowing into her son and she still was broke. She still was lacking. She still needed deliverance. The, the, the woman with the issue of blood is sowing into doctors. These are people that are deemed educated. They are deemed powerful. And she's sowing into them. And her, the Bible said her situation becomes worse. They had become her soul. And she's dying. When you deal with sowing, you can't just sow because you like somebody or you enjoy somebody, you have to sow in alignment with assignment. The seed that's not aligned will be declined. You ever saw when you made, you put your card inside that thing and it said decline? That means that no transaction was made. My God. Isn't that deep? If you ever saw decline on your card, it don't matter what you have about to purchase. No, 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 no purchase can happen. You know why? Because it was no transaction. The transaction was not successful. So when the card says decline, that means that even though I was aiming for this possession, I was aiming for this harvest, I was aiming for this to collect it, I can't collect it now because no transaction was made. And saints, people do that all the time. Either they're not a sower or they're sowing wrong. And saints, I, I, I want to show you why Satan wants you to sow wrong. Because when you sow wrong, then you get discouraged when you don't see the harvest. And that's how Satan can start convincing you it's not working. And saints, witchcraft sowing, witchcraft sowing is to injure your potentiality, your, your ability to keep on sowing futuristically is to injure you. Saints, it's the same way if somebody trusts the wrong person and the person um, hurts them somehow, traumatizes them somehow, then they take that distrust out on everybody. 
But see, why are they distrusting people? Because of that traumatizing situation where they trusted someone and it was a backlash. Well, Satan's intent is to get you to sow incorrectly so that you will become weary in that sowing glory of the spirit. So you won't go deep inside of it. And so you won't unlock the harvests. Do you know that when you're not a sower, the thief is spending your life, spending your abundance, spending your wealth. The thief secretly moves throughout the life of a non-sower in order to use their goods while they're blind. When you're not sowing, Satan is taking the stuff that you refuse to take and stealing it while you don't even know. Saints, what if you got $50 inside of your shoe and you go take a shower and there's 15 people in your house, you're having a gathering. And you leave your shoe out where everybody is gathered. And somebody looks inside the shoe and looks around. Nobody sees them and takes it. And you forget that you put that $50 or whatever inside that shoe. And you're looking all over for the $50. And then finally, you're like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe it fell out earlier today. Maybe. And then you hold another party. You got $20 right there on the side of the counter. And the person looks around and takes it and puts it in their pocket. And you, you, you like, did I have $20? Or maybe, 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 I, maybe I spent it and forgot what I spent it on. Maybe God did go to the store today. And saints, the job of the, that thief is to steal without your consciousness. So you're not conscious. So, so saints, I want you to understand that the thief is a spell caster. Like a familiar spirit. The thief, when Jesus said the thief coming but to steal. The thief not just stealing, obviously. The thief stealing by having you disinterested in sowing seed. When you're not thinking about sowing, when you're not aiming at sowing, when sowing is not your objective, that's how the thief could cast a spell on you. Your mind not even thinking about sowing. Saints, there's some people whose mind think about reaping and their mind never think about sowing. They're not even thinking about sowing no time. Saints, there's some people that even if they think about sowing, that thought is short-lived. It only lasts for a couple minutes, it's gone. Because the thief got them underneath a spell. See, the thief not stealing from you by obvious means. So the woman in Genesis, when the thief is right there operating in that conversation, want her to open up herself to be stolen from. That woman not seeing I'm not going to be rich like this no more. I'm not going to have this power over the earth. I'm not going to have this grace to be who I am as a help me. I'm not going to walk in glory. I'm not going to walk in wisdom. I'm going to have things difficult now. I'm going to struggle with temptation. I'm going to struggle with weakness. I'm going to struggle with poverty. I'm going to struggle with lack. I'm going to struggle with financial delay. I'm going to struggle with limitation. I'm going to struggle with debts. I'm going to struggle with battles that I was supposed to never even fight. I'm going to struggle with enemies I was never supposed to even engage. I'm going to struggle with provisional issues that I was never supposed to even encounter. And saints, she was stolen from. Saints, the first activity you see in the word where the thief is flexing on mankind is Adam. Then we see the thief flexing on mankind when we look at the life of Cain. Abel is sowing, 
Abel is listening to God. Cain is right there, the thief governing Cain. And th Cain is underneath a spell. And saints, not only is Cain operating underneath the thief's spirit, but then he operates in the three dimensions, stealing, killing, destroying. What did he do next? He killed his brother. That's the thief dimension. So he stepped into the mantle of the thief. That show you that he was underneath the spell of the thief because he had opened up himself to that thief's mindset, the thief's ministry, which is to get you unconscious of how when you're not listening to the Holy Ghost to give and receive, you're not listening to the Holy Ghost to honor and to be honored when you're not listening to the Holy Ghost for you to bless and be blessed. How the thief could even infiltrate your character and have you imitate being a murderer. Have you imitate being a, a, a stealer. Have you imitate being a destroyer. Saints, that's why I tell you, many women, they get into a relationship. Men get into a relationship. You ask that person all type of questions. What you should be asking them is how much do you sow? Do you understand sowing? What do you understand about seed time harvest? What do you understand? Uh huh? Huh? I would like to know that. You asking people about what school they went to, uh, what food, and all this stuff. And, and saints, you don't understand for a relationship to work, you got to be with a sower. Because a sower is humble. A sower not going to stop listening to God because you stop listening to God. A sower has died to themselves because they are committed and dedicated to releasing the right seed on their altar. They know that they reap what they sow. So they're not going to sow nothing bad because they're not trying to reap nothing bad. You, you, you open up your life to a non-sower. You see how much devils you got to battle to get back in right alignment with God. You, you, you get into a relationship with a non-sower, you see how your life come into a hell zone. A non-sower is a legion. They got thousands upon thousands of devils. You get with a non-sower, you see how your life go down. Unknowingly. Saints, you can't even... If you ever received the sowing glory, you... you, you your, your whole life going to be revolutionized because revolutionized because you, it's impossible for you to act like you don't know certain things. You're going to know it. Saints, when you start sowing into the Holy Ghost on earth, your eyes open up to stuff that you can never deny. You might sin against it. You might uh, uh, operate in a spirit of retardation and deception, but you're going to know some stuff. Sowing is an eye-opening grace that God has made available to whosoever. And when you connect with God in the earth and you start blessing who he sent to preach the word to you, your soul is enlightened with truth. You got the power to be free when you want. You can walk out of prison when you want. You can walk out of lack when you want. You can walk out of diseases when you want. You can walk in healing when you want. Walk in wisdom when you want. Walk in power when you want. Walk in truth when you want. Walk in joy when you want. Walk in laughter when you want. Walk in liberty when you want. You have dominion through seed and through time and through harvest. Sowing was a part of me tapping into manhood in the spirit. Because no man could truly be a man without sowing. The first man that God created, he made him in his image and likeness, but then he gave him a seed because he's showing him this is how the likeness works. Do you know what likeness means? It don't just mean that you like a person. But you're overflowing like them. You're possessed with their personality. You're possessed with their emotions, their mindset, their vision. So when God made Adam this man, he's saying, I'm going to make you to be overflowing in my personality. But he gives him the seed. 
You know why? Because God's personality is a sowing personality. You think about it. God creates the fish and then he sows oxygen in the fish through the water. But then God created the water and put oxygen in the water. He sowed oxygen in the water. Then he creates the fowls of the air. He sows food for the birds. He creates the lion, the tiger, the cheetah, the zebra, the elephant, and he sows food for all of them. Then he creates the creeping thing, the ants, and he sows food for them. So he's a sower. That's his personality. So when he makes Adam, he said, I make you in the overflow of my personality, but I'm going to give you a seed. Because this is the only way my person is going to flow in your personality. This is the only way you're going to be like me in my likeness. The overflow of being like me. So saints, when God ministers seed to you, he's allowing you to enter the zone of being completely like him in holiness and true righteousness. When you could have power to agree with his way. There's many people that don't agree with God. They're religious, but they're rugged at the same time. Because they do not have that power flowing that honor brings. When you walk in an honor and sowing towards God, that power allows your soul to be transformed and it could adapt to the raw truth of God. You wonder why you can understand things that a lot of people can't understand. Saints, do you know that there was people judging Solomon? But the queen of Sheba, she had sold so much money. The spirit of understanding was dominating her soul. She was dominated by the spirit of clarity. She understood Solomon. Solomon didn't have to tell her nothing. She didn't have to say, Solomon, what this woman over here doing? Man, what you talking about? You got this. What you talking about? This over here. What you talking about? This over here. What you talking about? That right there. Then what you got to do? No, she understood telepathically because she had sold so aggressively into Solomon that the mysteries of the kingdom of Solomon, the mysteries of how God was moving in Solomon, was easy for her to comprehend. She wasn't talking about Solomon. Can you repeat yourself one more time? Because you just say that one more time so I can understand what you're saying. She wasn't talking about Solomon. I, I, I don't understand what that means. Can you repeat that one more time? Because you tell me two more times. Because you explain to me why your life is like this. Why, why I see this. Why I see this. All of that stuff was understood. Because she was sowing. When you're sowing, God could tell you raw stuff and you're not like the world. You, it's not going in one ear and out the next. It is coming inside of you and birthing a lifestyle of, of, of agreement with God. Saints, I want you to always remember this. When you are a sower, you got to protect this sowing anointing by meditating what you have created with each seed. Every time you sow a seed, it is a creation ability of the Father moving through you because you permitted it. Whenever God give you seed to sow and you sow it, you have created another pleasure in your life. You've created another satisfaction season, satisfactory season. You, you, you have produced your own rest, your own deliverance, your own help. You tap into the help that God has for your life through seed sowing. When you start sowing seed, you start trusting God. You don't trust God until you start sowing. It's impossible for any man or any woman to trust God without sowing seed. Because money produces everything that you use in this life to keep you safe. Buy a gun, money. Pay your rent, money. Wear clothes, money. Transportation, money. Food to eat, money. Water, money. Everything is money. Hairstyle, money. Everything is money. When you start sowing, you officially start trusting God. You don't trust God until you start sowing. And then the level in which you sow 
is the level in which you have you have decided to trust. And that love can't be perfect until you are open to the Holy Ghost to tell you what he wants, when he wants. Nextly, sowing is not a fearful thing. You never have to be afraid of God asking you to give away everything and what you're going to do. You're dealing with the richest kingpin in existence. Everything belongs to him. If he snaps his finger, he could just birth something and manifest it right before you. This is not hard for God. This ain't no issue. This ain't no, no, no issue. This ain't no issue. You're dealing with the richest God in existence. Everything belongs to him. He walking on e economic packages. The Bible said that the streets of gold because God is walking on the money that you sometimes get worried about how it's going to get to you. God is walking on it. His economic system is not an issue at all. So you never get into a place of, of, of fretting and worry. Oh, what if he asked me to sow it all? You think God asking you to sow all so that you have nothing? The Holy Ghost will always try you to see if you're really perfect in love, if you have really cast out fear, because he got your whole life of riches and wealth waiting for you a long time. Sometimes you be in relationships with boyfriends, girlfriends, doing all type of nonsense, and God, he's hungry and eager to give you riches and wealth according to his divine plan, but he can't do it because he don't got your life. He don't got your soul. When, when you start officially crying out to God, he's hungry to give you the life of wealth. He's hungry to give you the life of, of, of prosperity. He's hungry. The Bible said he wishes above all things that you prosper. He wishes above all things. That means that this is God's highest desire. His highest desire is that you walk in prosperity. His highest desire is for you to walk in prosperity. Wow. Think about it. God's highest desire is for you to walk in prosperity. God's biggest wish is for you to be rich. Saints, do you know that word wishing is a word that expresses eager desire? When somebody wishes, that means that they have invested their feelings so strong into a thing that their imagination is now catapulted to see it and picture it. So, so saints, think about it. God imagines seeing you rich. So when God start introducing you to sowing, you got to recognize this is the Lord finally rejoicing because he's like, now you are opening up yourself for me to do what I've been wanting to do. I've been wanting to take you shopping. I've been wanting to make you have overflow. I've been wanting to make your wallet fat. I've been wanting to make your bank account fat. I've been wanting to give you niceness, nice items, accessories. I've been wanting to give you clothes, shoes, hairstyles. I've been wanting you to have some journey. I've been wanting you to have rest financially. I've been wanting you to have faith with God and with men. I've been wanting to cause money to come to you from every direction. I've been wanting to use investors in your life that good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over. They were given to your bosom while you're on earth. So this is God's imagination all the time. 